I always wanted to be a successful singer ever since I can remember. And that's how it started. And I really picked those words wisely because success to me was not this. I was born in Melbourne and I grew up on the Mornington Peninsula. You know, we are down here, the peninsula is like a little bubble. My whole childhood was just full of basketball and music, pretty much. So that's probably where a lot of my happiness lies in terms of my childhood. I remember one of the first songs I learnt was Kids MGMT. I googled C chord piano and it shows you where to put your fingers. And that's how I learnt every song until I'd done it so many times that I already knew most of them. The first song that I ever sang live at my first ever gig was I Can't Hold Us by Macklemore and I thought, well, if I'm going to go into this, finally I'm going to play my first thing, which wasn't a show, like people were just there eating or whatever. So I learnt the song and the lyrics and then came up with a melody for it. I, don't wanna be like them. I was just playing the same cafes over and over again. Nothing really happened for me and it was killing me through well, that whole time I was working in retail. I would just get so emotional and I would know that I'm not doing everything I could possibly do for myself. I heard that Byron was really good and, you know, it was really lenient. You could park up wherever and just busk. So I thought that's what I want to do and then my mind was just fixated on it. I had to always kind of feel shame and embarrassment saying that I want to be a busker. Honestly, my goal, that was my dream. I never thought it would happen, so I never preached it. It was just something that I just told my close friends. And I went to Byron Bay with like $50 in my pocket and I spent all my money on a van. It had already been like eight days I'd been there and I hadn't gotten up the courage to busk yet. And then Ab said, let's do this. She was pretty nervous, obviously. So I was like, we're all with you now. Like, if you're not gonna do it now with all of us with you, when are you gonna do it? We stood next to her while she started playing and then all of a sudden people just started stopping until we got to the point where there was a crowd in the streets. After that first night I kind of felt this sense of freedom, like I can go wherever I want, whenever I want. She stood out because she would bring a full-on battery, she'd rock up in a camper van, bring a full-on battery to plug all her equipment into. She had a keyboard, she had a speaker and she sang she sang like she meant it, you know? She sang like she wanted you to stop. She sang like she wanted you to hear it, and people did. Writing a song is like a way for me to tell people what I would never say in an interview. But if I'm singing it, I'm singing it because someone else might be in that same situation and they might want a release of that kind of song that I used to listen to when I needed a release growing up. So me singing it and making it into a song is offering a release. It's funny because Dance Monk is the only song I wrote out of anger. And I obviously wanted to write a song about like the unnecessary anger and aggression on the street towards me as a busker. And then I loved the dance monkey because that was how I felt. I thought that I would just like go dance or sing again, again, one more, like no care of me or how long I was going for. The six encores already did for them that night. When I first got told that my song went to number one in Australia, I didn't even know what that meant. I remember just seeing it on the music channels. I don't really watch TV, I always have the music channels on and I remember the music clip coming up. And I was like, this is, that, that's my friend. Like, this is a girl that, you know, like, took me in when I had no friends and let me sleep in her room and, you know, like, that's my friend. This is the point in your life when you realise you not only have what you wanted, but you have unnecessary things that you don't really need. 
I always feel misunderstood because of Dance Monkey. Because Dance Monkey was such a different song when I was busking on the street. And the aria for best female goes to... Tones and I. The view of me changed as the song got bigger. I had gone through some ruthless online bullying. So I think in that moment, I kind of felt I had achieved so much despite those people and because of the love of most of the country. I wanted to speak on that because that's something that I would have loved to see if I was watching at home with dreams of doing that myself. I'm still trying to write the album that I wanted to listen to when I was young. And I don't know what's going to happen after that, but right now, where I am, this is what I need to do. Almost like my younger self's inside me, asking for this for them. I can only write so much about being locked up in my house. I don't want my album to be about being locked up. I want it to be about the last two years of my life and the experiences and the stories. Fly Away was one of the easiest to write. I was like, I want to tell a story with the verse about, you know, expectations versus reality of what makes us happy and what we think is going to make us happy, but then how we feel when we get there. Playing my first live show back was awesome. I didn't think it would be very good, really beautiful vibes. So I got to play Fly Away for the first time. I started crying on stage. And then everyone was crying, like my stage tech was crying, like my monitors guy was crying, my production manager was crying, my friends were crying, everyone was crying. So yeah, that happened. I want my songs to be timeless. Whether it's a kid growing up and then saying to their kid, I used to love this song when I was young, or whether it's, you know, just completely being able to travel and play music for as long as I can. I just want to make sure there's always a bigger picture. I just want to have my fan base that I can play to and play live, and that's really the only place my happiness comes from. It doesn't come from charts. <laughs>